If you create complex Autolisp solutions, you may find at the end of your project that not only do you have multiple Autolisp source file .lsp type files to include, but you may have compiled code like FAS files, you may have things like dialog control or DCL languages, data files, which could be in the form of TXT, it could be any number of files that would be required to correctly deploy your project. We can see an example of this here in some various files that, that I've got listed in a project that I've created. So in order to combine all of these together and deploy them as one solution that can be loaded as one file, and bring all that functionality to your user with easier management, you can create what's called a Visual Lisp Executable, or VLX, file. Let's see how that works. So what we'll do here is go into the Visual Lisp editor, look at the console, and from the file menu here, we'll go to Make an Application. We'll use the New Application Wizard, and we'll see how this works. Now, if all you have to do is combine several LSP files together, you can use the simple wizard, and that will be fine. If you need to combine different types of files together, you'll want to use the expert one. And in practice, I just use the expert one because it leaves all my options open. So we'll go ahead and highlight the expert wizard. Step through that here. We will tell the application to go to a useful directory for us. I'll put it out in my Autolisp folder on my X network drive, and we'll give the application a name. So how about test project? And we'll see that that will get a .vlx suffix when this is all done. Next, what we'll do is move forward and select our files. So we will now add Autolisp source files, which we'll use the project, project2, and SQL files that I've developed. Now we'll move on to the next, and we will add our DCL file, which was for my SQL function there. Move on next. And now what we'll do is simply compile that using standard compile methodologies. We'll say next and we'll tell it to go ahead and build the application. We'll see some things going on here as the various functions are compiled and checked and turned into fast loadable or FAS file types. And everything here will be completed. So we get a status showing us that the application has been built and completed and that it has gone to this folder with this name. So let's go ahead over there and have a look. And sure enough, the compile operation ran, and we now have a testproject.vlx. This file can now be copied anywhere and loaded simply as one VLX file. We picked up one additional file which really wasn't specified as the wizard was created, and that was the .prv file. Now what this does is it simply contains all the instructions, the file pointers and names, that we created during the wizard, it remembers this. Therefore, you could go back, and rather than having to make the application all over again with the wizard, you could rebuild the application by simply picking this PRV project file, opening it, and it would be recompiled. So next week, if you needed to change some of your Lisp code, you could simply keep the same PRV file and then rerun it and recompile, and you would get a fresh VLX file that would be up to date based on your source files. So this is a very powerful way to deploy solutions, combining or concatenating all these different types of files together, and deploying them as one loadable VLX file. So try that out if you do complex Autolisp programming projects. I think you'll find that to be a very economical way to manage it. Good luck.